Hey everybody and welcome back to Hand of Fate. Two even. Alright, so first off, let's go ahead and remove some equipment that isn't and the holy mace is interesting, but it's not good enough. The broadsword is not interesting enough, I don't think. I might still put something in. But I'm looking, I think, for more utility stuff. Um, or maybe not. Food bounty. What does this do? I forget. Somewhere that lasts 60 seconds while active gain. One food for every enemy. Defeated excludes undead, which means not actually useful. Um... Don't starve? Lose one max life instead of taking starvation damage. You know what? I'll throw them in there. They could be really good. And let's add in the gladiator's visage. See what it is. Alright, encounters. Um... Don't need the purgatory anymore. So we can add in. Bitter winter? May gain food. Results influenced by completing a quest. May trade food for rewards. Gaining food is both good and bad. The thing is, I'd rather just not have any food, because giving it away is, like, what happens, so... Man, this is tough. Mean life, remove curses, rise companion, shop. It's got a shard on it, but... Upgrade equipment. I don't really know what I want. I don't know. Sure. Combat seems like a reasonable thing to do. Hello, Thomas the Ogre. Maybe I shouldn't start with the plus food. The kingdoms of death were once pledged to my throne. The usurper cares not for our old suits, however. He has driven the deathless from his lands. I mean, I wish that I could sell food. Got it. You catch the both. We get our food back. Oh, whoopsie. Shit. I meant to give them food. This is going to be a mistake, but I'm asking for supplies. It's a lot of food. And I'm giving eight food up. I probably should just give up five and take the pain cards, but. Alright, no need to kill them all. Yeah, there's definitely a token in there. If you get five of the little shards, you get more stuff. I like that. I think that's a good way of doing progression. But I think I need to kill a certain number of them, probably half. I just don't have improved equipment right now. Dead. 
Dang it. Ah, stop hitting me. Why are they fighting her? Jesus. I need Colbjorn's blade. Killing so many northerners. Fame and a health potion. I'll give you food. Your supply. I have no food. No. Make your choices carefully. Gasping with each step, hoping to survive. Shut up. Find food if you can. Fuck off. They keep- I have to give it away! While taking refuge in Nog's Head Tavern, popular drinking establishment, you find a man resting his head in a pool of ale, a look of utter gloom fixed on his face. Anders! Ariadne pushes forward and pulls him into a proper sitting position. He blinks twice, then slumps back into his ale. Though much more disheveled since you last saw him, this is indeed Anders, apprentice blacksmith and friend to Ariadne. I'll offer him some gold. And I've lost it. I'll do it again. I lost it. Eh, it worked. Andrew still looks glum, but at least he isn't lying in a pool of ale anymore. What happened to your forge? My forge is shattered, that blasted ogre. I hope you killed it. Why are you in a puddle of ale? I am a man without purpose, a man without money, a man without friends. Cheer up, Anders. Ariadne returns from the bar with a basket of fried almond bread. Whatever it is you need help with, I'm sure this old hero here can help you. Can you repair my forge? The apprentice blacksmith looks doubtful. I'll need Teravane ore, among other things. Not to mention it was your late father who built it. So I have no idea how to even begin rebuilding. I'll try. Your companion nods, her blue eyes bright and earnest. Of course, easy as pie. Anders looks a little bit more hopeful. You really are nothing like your father. Ariadne frowns, then shakes her head and grids. Thank the gods for that. So twisting your path to this table. Now I begin to understand why you cannot help but aid the hapless. So we accept. We listen to more stories. We listen to more stories. We listen to more stories. Have you seen the ogre? Return the stolen food. I will not fight. I will try to win things. I can win this. That will set you in good stead from here. It is your choice. You can use the weapons you have, or you can attempt to be worthy. Of this one. We'll play the dice game. Nice. I think if I hadn't rerolled the four, I wouldn't have gotten it. Every third step does not consume food. Every comp adds two max life. Oh my god, we want this Imperial Helm for. Oh my gosh. Yes. But we want this for now. Okay. I want to say it's this one. Ah, oh well. That one's the hardest one to win, in my opinion. Because there is, like, it is a thing you can do. There is a skill involved in it, but. You should buy food. You can't, of course. Shut up, dealer. You continue to involve yourself in northern affairs. 
Imagine what you could have achieved if you devoted yourself to study. I could beat you with a book. Ursus, a young warrior from the north, proposes a hunting contest. This farmer kindly saved my boy instead of handing him to the Empire. I will rid the land of the boars destroying his crops in thanks. Who will be a worthy opponent? As you step forward to accept the challenge, the farmer warns. Not only have they been wreaking havoc on my fields, a huge white beast ate one of my lambs. I act off his tusk, but he still roams. You and Ursus shake hands before heading into the fields, paying heed to the gnarly grunts echoing in the distance. Eh, why not? Nice. Ooh, card sharp. I got an achievement. Following its huge tracks, you find the monstrous white boar by the river. You stealthily approach as he sharpens his single tusk on a boulder. When he senses your presence, he grunts in the common tongue with a strange lilted accent. Spare this old boar, blessed... Spare this old blood, blessed mortal. Oh, Jesus. I will spare him. Bonus reroll. After all rolls in the dice gambit, reroll your lowest die. That is good. And we got the token. You continue hunting until the sun begins to set, then haul your kills back to the farmhouse. Ursus place in front of a pile of dead beasts as the farmer tallies your kills. I'll keep the five. Need a three. Oh, never mind. I need a four, but I'll take it. This adventure is the clear winner today. Having slain 17 beasts, announced the farmer, take a basket for my latest harvest as a reward. Okay, that's good. That's not so good. That's good. We're at the point where we can give it all away and still eat for a little bit. The thing is, I could just eat it all right now. And I should have. Fuck you, peasants. What do you think happens to the mind when one returns from death in this way? What happens to the heart? I will attack them. I will attack the skeletons because I think that's why we had to fight the skeletons later on. But I don't know if we get more of a reward from fighting the skeletons then. We have less defense because of our shield. I probably should have exchanged it. I don't know why it makes us eat less food, but... Valiant Ages. Strange mystery. The whims which keep some ancient relics in our hands while others are but dust. I thought the other skeleton hadn't had revived and was running off into the corner. This was not correct, but Ooh. I have no food. I have no gold. Just mashing A. The damage will persist unless you can find a meal to relieve yourself. I understand how this works. A noxious smell alerts you to an oncoming group of Toshers, led by a short, stumpy woman with an eye patch. Eye patch Eve, they call her, and although they dress in greasy drabs, her fingers are adorned with exquisite rings and their pockets are deep with gold. Look at this princess. I bet they've never done a day's dirty work, she sniggers. What do you say? Fancy eking out a bit of coin? Tides are coming. Better get in there quick, princess, says Eye patch Eve, as one of them consorts lift as one of her consorts lifts a lid off a manhole. 
As you and the other Toshers come splashing down and your boots soak up the muck, you feel something at the bottom of the putrid subterranean river. I can't not. You're, you plunge your hands into the rancid water and pull it out. If I roll that, I need a four. Sure. Got it. You'll fish out the trinket, doubtful it's worth such torment. The sewer walls tremble. Time to surface, she shouts as the Toshers lift themselves out of the gutter. You, are, They leave you behind and you're swarmed by the corrupted. They close in as you draw your weapon. You might as well destroy him. I think this is the course of action that gets you the token also. That's what we're here for, is tokens. And, well, vengeance for Kolbjorn, clearly. I was going to say, she's the perfect person to have with us. She deals extra armor damage. I don't know if we took a hit there with the last charge. It looks like we didn't. Before you escape the wretched sewer, you salvage what you can from their ashes. Some gold, that could be useful. Which gives us a food, which means our next step. Oh, and we got the token. Yeah. She smells oh my god. Upon you. Death. Promised, but not delivered. Death, whose time has been delayed. The sky is unnaturally dark as you approach the ruined graveyard. A cloaked figure stands amid the crumbling tombstones. Despite your stealthy approach, it turns to watch your arrival. The living have no place here, she rasps, the, breath, the breath leaving her body with some effort. Though you will make fine source material for another minion... She raises her staff and undead rise from the ground. I'm not terribly worried about this. I do have 50 health. And Ariadne is pretty good. The skeletons aren't too bad. I have a feeling that she will infinitely raise the skeletons. But I'm still going to try and put some of them down. Actually, that's not true. I'm going straight for her. This necromancer turns the dead into tools of chaos and slaughter. Use bash to break through her gruesome armor. That was not the person I wanted to attack, but... Yeah, she's just going to keep raising... Ouch. Oh, she's channeling. Nice, I used the immunity well. Come on. Yeah. Ah! Wow. It didn't kill all of them. It left one alive. <laughs> that skeleton has seen some shit. Beautiful. Unfortunately, we didn't get to Bridgemore, so we... Wait, you have to RNG yourself? Oh, that sucks. 
Can we at least go to Bridgemore and still get the gold token? Smoking ash and all that remains of the necromancer as you inspect the contents of the crypts. There you find letters written and signed with the Emperor's seal, each one calling for your death. What have you done to earn the Emperor's wrath? As if in answer, the voice of the Hermit rings in your ears. It's not what you have done, but what you are yet to do. A powerful force presses against you, and every move takes you closer to the end of the game. You have few friends now. I think I did get it. This is what we seek to eradicate. The wretched Thomas and that stretch across our land. Ring of Defense. Good, we did get it. Any unnecessary villager deaths. Kolbjorn's traps. For the promise to fix Andrew's forge, we get our next one. Awesome! That was a lot faster than I expected it to go. So I'll take it. Gold. So yeah, thank you guys for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. That was pretty fun. I liked that fight there. I wasn't really expecting it to kill everything, but I'm glad that I made the right choice in just focusing on her. It worked out. Uh, I definitely feel like that one was shorter because you pretty much can starve immediately and they kind of needed a countdown. So I'll take it. There wasn't anything too much more complicated to do there so be it i guess <laughs> but yeah thank you guys for watching i will see you next time and until then keep your gears turning